Hi guys, it's your Pontiff Archie Luxury. Today I would like to talk about scarcity marketing. What is scarcity marketing? <laughs> scarcity marketing is when a brand or company limits supply of stock to increase the desirability, perceived value of said goods to ultimately sell more goods and to get higher prices for said goods. It's a bit of bastardry in order to yank up more profits and increase, increase their profits and also increase the client base. Now, scarcity marketing this is a very interesting concept. Where did scarcity marketing come from in luxury goods? Now, scarcity marketing is also, sometimes it can be a result of a sudden rush for product. When the Rolls-Royce, Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow came out in the late 60s, uh, this was kind of a very, um, it was a very revolutionary car. It was more of a owner driver than a chauffeur sort of car. The Silver Shadow. I'm fortunate enough to have actually uh, driven quite a few Silver Shadows. Uh, I've driven the Wraith, the longer, the longer version. And I got to be totally honest with you, they were so ahead of the time. In by modern standards, they're probably a bit dated, but um, they came out in 1965, and they were a big V8-powered luxury car. It's a full-size luxury car. Now, when they came out, England was going through the the economic boom period after World War II. The, the 50s were very, very much rationing and scarcity. The 60s, the things started to improve, the swinging 60s. And the upper middle class could squeeze into a Rolls Royce. So prices for Rolls Royces, when they came out, actually were selling on the secondary market more than new prices because of the wait list. Now, this was more to do with the demand was suddenly so high, more so than Rolls-Royce, who was actually Vickers, Vickers PLC at the time, being a mob of bastards. So it was more to do with the supply and demand. Now, if we look at luxury goods, the company that invented scarcity marketing Scarcity marketing is Hermes. Hermes! That's the orange, famous orange box. The Birkin. The Birkin. The Birkin and the Kelly. So they invented this scarcity marketing. Basically, to get a Birkin or a Kelly, you've got to be a customer with the store, meaning you buy a whole lot of other stuff, and then you're offered the chance to buy a Birkin or a Kelly. Scarcity marketing. Now, the thing with this is, it is highly, it, it, it plays on the human psyche. We want what we can't have. The girl who says no, we want her more than the easier girl. And it's it's just a it's it's just how the human psyche works. We have an inferiority complex where we never think we're good enough and when a company plays on that they can they can get us to do weird things. Hermes uh, is the master at this and Rolex has ventured into this game. Basically, Rolex now um, 
in the 90s, if you wanted a Rolex, most Rolexes were available. The Daytona was hard to get, but you could you could get one. You just went on a waiting list and eventually it would come through. In the 90s, gold or two-tone was still discounted. Well, guess what? With a bit of scarcity marketing, even solid gold is in high demand and selling. Some models are selling way above retail on the secondary market. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. So, i got to be totally honest with you. Rolex wasn't to be outdone. No, Patek Philippe had the same thing happen with their Aquanaut and Nautilus. Now, in the Patek case, I don't think Patek has kind of adjusted supply. They've always made a certain number of watches since they they had that product line. And what's kind of happened is, through a quirk of fate, the steel sports watches have become incredibly desirable. And it's, you're now seeing prices three times retail for some Patek pieces on the secondary market. It is incredible. Long wait lists, long queues, it is very, very difficult. Now, the thing is, scarcity marketing itself there, it's, it's not a new concept. In fact, some upmarket jewelry stores, you needed to be invitation, invited in. They weren't open to the hoi polloi. You had to be invited in in and that's that's um um that is exactly um this is exactly what what happened there so it was um it was a very interesting situation one of the uh one of the the cars from the 1950s. There was a car which was called a dual gear. When you hear gear, some of you Australians there would be familiar with uh, the Ford Fairmont gear. Same gear, yes, the dual gear. Dual gear was a. It was they actually they 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 used a lot of Chrysler engines. And they were a super sort of sort of exclusive kind of luxury car there. Uh, the the engines, as I said, they're Chrysler. Uh, it was that they they were a company when what they did was uh, you had to be invited to buy one. Famous dual gear customers, Lucille Ball, Frank Sinatra. And rumour has it that they wouldn't sell one to Sammy Davis Jr. In fact, Frank Sinatra sold his one to Sammy because they didn't want to sell to a coloured man. And um, it's you had to be invited to buy one. This was the jewel gear. So, so scarcity marketing isn't a new concept. It's been there for a long time. Um, it's it's really um, it's really one of these these concepts. And as far as Rolex goes, they seem to be doing very well with this scarcity marketing. And I, I kind of think, is it hype? Is it real? What is it? 
I, I think before the 90s, they didn't have the horde of Chinese buyers who, who wanted to get Rolex. So you've got a, a huge... China has produced a lot of... A lot of people in China are poor, but there's also a lot of fairly well-off or fairly aspirational people. You've also got a situation where... I was a collector of Rolex in the late 90s, and many collectors said, what do you want three or four Rolexes for? Just have one and that's it. That was the opinion. It was kind of considered obscure to really have Rolex as your brand. And uh, I had I had five. I had five Rolex. I had 18238 Day Date with Factory Diamond Dial. Explorer 2, 16570. Explore, uh, a sub-date, 16610. 16013, two-tone date just, R serial number. And a 16800 Submariner as my beta. That was my five. And Rolex, Rolex, that was considered weird. Why so many Rolex? Well, Rolex is... Now it's so cool. Guys, scarcity marketing, what do you think of it as a concept? Is it good, bad, or ugly? I think, unfortunately, it's here to stay. I can't see it leaving anytime soon. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you guys think of that. Hi, guys. Archie Luxury. And who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for... Quality pre-owned wristwatches, David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. Hey guys, Archie Luxury, who do I recommend for watches in Brisbane and Sydney? Vintage Watch Co. That's correct. Vintage Watch Co. in Brisbane Arcade in Brisbane and the Strand Arcade in Sydney. Vintage Watch Co. Brisbane and Sydney. Ronnie, I've known him since the late 90s. Ronnie is a top bloke. Luke is a great guy. Vintage Watch Co. That is who I recommend in Australia. Check out Vintage Watch Co. and the guys' amazing range of watches. They also do service and repairs. Vintage Watch Co. That is where the pontiff goes. You know, some of my paddocks came from Vintage Watch Co. That's right, guys. Vintage Watch Co.